In a recent whirlwind of news, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has once again managed to stir the pot of Canadian politics. This time, it's his controversial comments against Quebec Premier Francois Legault that are making waves. As the tension between English and French-speaking Canadians escalates, Trudeau's remarks have added fuel to the fire. But what exactly did he say and why has it sparked such a heated debate? We're about to unravel the latest in this ongoing political saga. This gripping story, coupled with the ongoing precarious situation of Air Canada pilots on the brink of a strike, paints a vivid picture of the current state of our nation under liberal governance. Amidst these unfolding events, one cannot help but ponder the broader implications for national unity, economic stability, and the integrity of our political landscape. Stay tuned as the political chess game intensifies with every move scrutinized and every vote crucial. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we get into today's video, take a quick second to follow our Facebook page where we post multiple times every day reporting straight facts on Trudeau's disappointments. We will leave you the link below. Click the follow button so you don't miss our next viral post destroying Trudeau. On his recent trip to Montreal, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau did what he does best, blame others for the problems caused by his own party's policies. With a flair for dramatics, Trudeau accused Quebec Premier Francois Legault of attacking English Canadians and pitting citizens against each other. Now, isn't that a classic case of the pot calling the kettle black? It seems Trudeau has decided the best way to rally support for the upcoming Lasalle AMR Verdon by election is to point fingers. Legault's latest directives aiming to regulate the use of languages other than French across the Health and Social Services Network have certainly ruffled some feathers. Premier Legault has been accused of discriminating against Anglophones by increasing tuition for out of province students at English universities. Trudeau, ever the champion of linguistic fairness, found this particularly egregious. His government has been pushing Quebec for a new healthcare directive, insisting on his role as the unifier of Canadians. Yet, one can't help but notice the irony, considering Trudeau's track record in handling national unity. I have to ask the question, though, for people about to vote here in this by-election, so I'm wondering what you tell Montreal's Anglophone population, and yeah. I bring this up because I get these calls all the time whenever we talk about this, who feel the federal liberals have let them down. Well, first of all, I understand that feeling because people are feeling, well, first of all, they see a, a government in Quebec City, Legault government, that has decided the best way to protect French, which is something that I agree with. Yes, we need to protect French, but Legault's decided the best way to Quebec protect French is to attack the English Canadians. And that doesn't make any sense. We see the most egregious example of it uh, lately with uh, the switch at the, at, in, in hospitals. We also see it in his attacks on, on our alma mater at McGill yeah. and his attacks on bishops and, 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 and Concordia. But the idea that someone's going into a hospital for a, a, a test or something, anxious, they might have cancer, anxious, they might be sick, and is going to have to be worried about whether or not they can get treated in English because their French isn't that strong, that's just wrong. And we've been pushing on the Legault government to emit a new directive. But, but, you, and they, but nothing has happened. There's well, been no change. They, they, they have said, they have committed to putting out a new directive uh, and to change that directive. And we're going to keep pushing on them as we have to do that. Now, the one thing that Legault wants that I don't want is a fight. He's trying to pit people against each other, and my commitment to Canadians has always been to try and pull people together. And picking sides and and trying to trying to say, okay, this one's more strategic for me to back or not. No, I, I'm I'm a proud Quebecer. I'm a proud Montrealer. I my mom's from Vancouver. My dad's a Franco was a Francophone. Like I get the duality. I get the strength of this 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 town. I get the strength of this province. Trudeau's position has not only caused a stir in Quebec, but has also resonated across the nation raising questions about the real motivation behind his comments. Are his criticisms of Legault genuine concerns for linguistic balance or merely a strategic move to divert attention from his administration's failings? These points of contention lay bare the deep divisions and unresolved issues within Canadian society. Moreover, Trudeau accused Legault of trying to turn people against each other. It seems every accusation Trudeau has ever made has matched his own actions before. Legault's controversial measures, including heightened regulations on English usage in Quebec's health and social services, have fueled tensions. Yet, Trudeau's vehement criticism, while positioning himself as a defender of linguistic fairness, also draws attention to his administration's own challenges. In another twist to the tale, as if dealing with language wars wasn't enough, Trudeau's government has another problem looming on the horizon, the possibility of a large-scale disruption in air travel. Amid these linguistic clashes, another storm brews the looming threat of an Air Canada pilot's strike. As negotiations reach a tentative resolution, the saga raises broader questions about labor relations and the state of Canada's aviation sector. Air Canada pilots are prepping for a potential strike, possibly grounding the national carrier's operations. Federal Labor Minister Steve McKinnon, 
with his optimistic rhetoric, claims there is no reason for a strike, urging both parties to knuckle down and get the deal done. But who's kidding whom? As both sides grapple with unresolved issues, the threat of a shutdown looms large. Look, when we say that we believe that the best results come from the bargaining table, we mean that. And that's not stepping back, that's putting the responsibility directly on unions and on employers to get the work done, to do the hard work of figuring out how to make things work. That's what we've demonstrated for years now in standing with people in the right to strike, but in putting very clear expectations that we need to be creating jobs and growing the economy at the same time. So I'm not going to put my thumb on the scale on either side. It is up to Air Canada and the Pilots Union to do the work to figure out how to make sure that they are not hurting millions of Canadians who rely on air travel, thousands and thousands of businesses across this country who will be hurt if they can't get the work done at the bargaining table. So I know every time there's a strike, people say, oh, you'll get the government to come in and fix it. We're not going to do that. We believe in collective bargaining and we're going to keep pushing people to do it. Yes. You know, we have and we will protect the Canadian economy. But first and foremost is putting all the pressure on the people who need to feel that pressure, the unions and the employers, to figure out how not to hurt Canadians and the Canadian economy by getting to the right place. With political and economic turbulence on the rise, Trudeau's latest moves leave Canadians wondering if this is a strategic gambit or a sign of deeper systemic issues. Pierre Polyev, the conservative leader, jumping into the fray, called for a fair deal for the pilots and criticized the Liberal NDP alliance, which has seen Canadian pilots earning far less than their American counterparts. Wonder why? Polyev didn't hold back in highlighting how nine years of Liberal NDP collaboration have done more harm than good for the country's working class. But Jebmeet Singh, ever the Liberal apologist, was quick to chastise Polyev, accusing him of playing a political game. Is Singh serious? This from the same party that has supported back-to-work legislation repeatedly over the years. Finally, in a stroke of luck, or maybe shrewd negotiation, a last-minute tentative deal was reached between Air Canada and the union representing over 5,200 pilots just in time to avert the strike. So we're going to do everything we can to fight back. We're going to send a clear message again that we are opposed to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals or any government interfering with workers. We're opposed to that. We're going to fight back. If there's any bills being proposed on back-to-work legislation, we're going to oppose that. We're going to fight back against that. We're never going to support back-to-work. Unlike Pierre Polyev, who likes to cosplay, likes to put on a costume as if he cares uh, about workers, but the reality is he voted to send workers back to work, basically undermining their right to strike, undermining their ability to get a free, freely and fairly negotiated contract, undermining workers eight times, just himself. He voted eight times to force workers back to work. This is someone with a proven track record of hurting workers, of opposing workers' interests. So let's be clear, New Democrats are the only allies for working people that will always stand resolute in favor of workers and we will never support back to work legislation. But would back to work legislation be a red line for your confidence in the government? Well, we've said, I said this to Justin Trudeau you know, years ago when, we were, when I was fighting to force Justin Trudeau and the Liberals to deliver things like dental care that if you ever make back-to-work legislation a confidence vote, we will always vote against that. So you can never count on our support. Whatever you say, you want to make it a confidence vote, make it one. We're still going to vote against it because we oppose undermining working people. Well, let's be really clear. This is about uh, the Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau's party, wanting uh, fancy things for their friends while Canadians can't even afford a home. That's what this is all about. And we've seen that again and again with actually we've seen it with Liberals and with Conservatives. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're being very prudent and responsible with the way we spend our, our federal and public money. The new four-year agreement promises pay raises, improved work rules and better retirement benefits which ALPA claims will generate an additional $1.9 billion of value for Air Canada's pilots. Sounds like a win, 
at least for now. But is this merely a patch to cover a bigger, systemic issue within our national airlines and the government's handling of labor relations? The agreement is a temporary relief for travelers and the airline itself, but it raises deeper questions about the sustainability of Canada's aviation industry, labor rights, and how economically vulnerable sectors are managed by the government. With labor relations coming to the forefront once again, the spotlight is firmly on Trudeau's administration and its ability to navigate through turbulent times. As we reflect on the latest political and economic turbulence in Canada, one thing is for certain, the liberal government under Justin Trudeau continues to find new ways to strain national unity and incite public discontent. Uh, as a former executive with Air Canada, I know you're not at the bargaining table and not directly there. I just wonder what your sense is of what we've heard from the public posturing and, and inside the company of where these talks are. How close could this be to falling apart or maybe having a breakthrough? Well, David, the fact that both parties remain at the bargaining table uh, leads me to have a tiny bit of optimism, uh, also coupled with the fact that uh, management has uh, tabled an offer that is uh, quite uh, generous by any measure, a 30% increase over three years. Let's not forget that WestJet pilots, represented by the exact same union, uh, accepted a deal and avoided a strike that was 24% over four years. So, you know, Air Canada is apparently quite serious about avoiding a strike by tabling an offer that beat that uh, winning offer over at WestJet. I, I wonder what you make of the, the political dynamic around this, Duncan, right? Because uh, you, you do have them calling for the prime minister's government to get involved here. You heard the clip of him saying the pressure needs to stay at the table. You need to get the deal. Pierre Polyev is kind of sided with the, uh, the pilots, and we know the NDP is not going to rush to management side here. So how does that external dynamic affect what's happening at the bargaining table when it doesn't really look like the weight of government is going to come to bear on this right now? You know, I'm not even sure how external that pressure is. My understanding is that the Minister of Labor met with both sides yesterday. And today. Uh, where he le and, to and today. And he leaned on very heavily on uh, both sides to come to a deal. So, you know, that pressure is being uh, bo brought to bear. Um, you know, the, the, the might of the federal government is being brought to bear at the negotiating table. This random attack that Trudeau has been throwing here and there might have something behind it. It's not very common for a prime minister to wake up in the morning and choose violence all of a sudden. What might be behind this behavior? From pitting Canadians against each other along linguistic lines to their controversial handling of labor negotiations, it's clear that much remains to be desired in their governance approach. With a political climate as charged as it is, these developments beg the question. How much longer can Canadians tolerate such divisive and poorly managed leadership? The ongoing debates and tensions are not just a reflection of the current political landscape, but also indicators of deeper, underlying issues that need to be addressed for the nation to move forward cohesively. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau is diverting attention from his government's failures with all these new attacks randomly? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.